for the last few months I've been doing this so that I can do this. So while I consider myself to be a pretty adventurous guy, this one put me in my place. So several hours later, after waking up at 4.30 a.m., my friend Laura and I are staring at this massive granite wall of Long's Peak, the highest peak in Rocky Mountain National Park. So a little backstory. For the last few months, I've been taking ice skating lessons with Laura. And before this, I had never stepped foot on ice in skates. Justin's first day, first steps. <laughs> Now, the reason I'm doing this is because Laura is a amazing professional ice skater with a, an extensive career in figure skating that has a very impressive resume of being in the outdoors and doing extreme things. <laughs> I've been looking for the perfect one on the hike down. <laughs> yeah, the perfect one is like a round rock the size of two fists. Okay, this ice is nice and clear. This ice is, um, it's been here longer, so the sun has had more time on it, so those bubbles have formed and com come up through the ice. And in general, we're just seeing a lot of pressure cracks, kind of really thick cracks, <laughs> fusing together. They start as, as hairlines to start, like the surface will have these hairline cracks on it, then as the ice gets thicker and thicker, thicker, those cracks continue to force and create these ice walls in there that you can see. And pressure because ice expands. It, it, it contracts and it expands. Okay. So the water molecules are contracting before it freezes, but as soon as it hits 39 degrees of water temperature, it then expands. So then ice, as it's growing, it's expanding outward. Um, and then as it's growing down, that's what the water is doing as it continues to grow. So that's like the, the expansion and the and the contraction is what's creating the, the thin layer hair cracks that you see to start. And then as things get thicker, um, it continues to do that over time, so. My goal with this is to get better at ice skating so I can go on these trips with her, so I can document what she's doing. She's doing a lot of really cool things of teaching people how to safely skate on ice on wild ice specifically not only how to skate but how to be safe in these extreme weather elements and things like falling through ice into the cold water and learning how to save yourself so she is a, a true adventurer and is just doing a lot of really cool things so i want to document that my goal is to get good enough to skate on wild ice so i can start filming which I still have a long ways to go, so <laughs> yeah. But this was my first time going on a trip with her and I was super stoked. But I'm not going to lie, I got worked. This trip took us through deep snow, narrow trails that hugged steep slopes and climbing up big boulders. Now, that all being said, it was around 10 degrees and with 35 mile per hour winds, it was probably, the wind chill was probably below zero. On top of that, I had a massive pack on, roughly about 35 pounds of gear. And I'm not gonna lie, I was, sometimes I was completely overwhelmed and I was miserable. Straight up. It is so windy. Definitely uh, some type two fun up here. You know, I couldn't feel my fingers. I took my boots off to try and put my ice skates on, which were frozen solid, and my feet were exposed to the cold and the wind, and there was just snow whipping in my face. I couldn't see. It hurt. It was just so much going on, and it was a little bit, honestly, miserable, but it was so dope. Like, the views, I'm not going to lie, the views of being up there were incredible. Like, there's a thing called type two fun where type two fun is actually, it's the idea of like doing something that's really difficult, but it's also very like rewarding once it's done. It's like the idea of like a long hike where it's like physically, maybe mentally draining. Maybe the weather conditions are poor. Maybe you've got like to bring snacks or you're starving, but then 
you get to the top of the view and it's like you look over you look over like the cliff and it's like this amazing view on the horizon and that is the definition of type 2 fun so i'm not gonna lie this was type 2 fun but also at some points it was also just a little miserable even though i was there to film laura my first goal was just to be safe and to make sure i'm comfortable even though i'm like a little uncomfortable in some situations <laughs> Here it goes. As we were hiking, there was one point where we went down to the lake, did some skating, filmed Laura, but then we kept going. And I honestly, we got to take this ice and snow field to go up take the second lake that was up even higher. And honestly, I just didn't feel safe going. I think it was I was past it was a little past my comfort zone. I forgot my trekking poles. I just had a really heavy pack that with like the extreme wind. This made it really difficult for me to keep my balance. And shortly before us, there was someone who actually slipped and fell and slid down this massive slope. The guy, that same person, had gone on all trails to review the trail for that day and posted that he almost died. Uh, we were on the lake, and at one point, I put my pack down, and it, like I said, it was so windy that my massive 35-pound pack let me let me go get it i'll show you i'm talking about this pack right here this massive thing loaded with gear had just slid across the lake because it was that windy now at this point i'm not really concerned or anything like i'm not nervous about the steep trail or anything like that because we're just we're on this lake everything's good it's windy it's cold it's a little bit miserable but overall, I feel safe. Look at that. Uh, epic views, but very cold temperatures. I think it's about 10 degrees. And there's a gust of, I don't know, man, gust of 30 miles an hour, 40 maybe. But Laura is crushing it. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. The light hitting it? Yeah. Yeah. But despite all that, I was still just overwhelmed. To be completely honest, I wasn't really expecting to do much filming on this trip. I understand that there will be like plenty of other opportunities to do that in the future. For me, this trip was just about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Really, for me, it was kind of like training. Even though the goal was to not really do a bunch of filming, I still had anticipated that I would have filmed more than I actually did. But honestly, I just had to focus on one thing at a time. When you have all that stuff going on, like the heavy gear, um, you know, your feet are cold, your fingers are cold, it's windy, you have this massive pack on, you're going through snow, you're getting physically a little tired. It wasn't like too demanding for me, but it was still enough that I was like huffing and puffing. And then on top of that, you have to focus on filming. It's just honestly, like mentally, it was a lot to do. So I just focused on one thing at a time. Now, even though there was points when I was like, I was just really cold, my fingers were frozen, I kind of feel my toes. This kind of sucks, but man, like look at these views. Like these views are nuts. Like they were so crazy. The clouds were just like wavy and the sky was so blue and the lake was so blue and you were just like staring at this massive mountain peak in the distance of like wind and snow just whipping up into the air because it's so windy and you can't help but just feel like this is absolutely amazing. Like that was dope. Like that was, that trip was awesome. I loved it. It was tough. Definitely type two fun. Would highly recommend and I would absolutely do it again. That being said, doing all that and trying to do this, like film with this camera and like try to tell a compelling story and focus on the camera settings and the composition and like thinking of like sequences in your head of like, okay, now we got a shot of her putting the ice skates on. Now I get a shot of her, a wide shot with the mountains in the background of her going by. We get some close ups of the skates on the ice, close ups of her face. When you're filming, you're kind of like, trying to like not only solve a puzzle but like create the puzzle and like think of it in your head of how you can put all these pieces together so it's just really tough to do all of that when you have like all these other elements going on in the background 
and that's like the main thing that this whole trip was about was just like getting used to being out there putting myself in those elements learning like the logistics of what gear to pack what gear not to pack what to not forget next time as many of you guys know i'm a very forgetful person so i forgot my trekking poles will it make hiking a little easier um, and it's just like learning all these little things you don't think about, like bringing like extra hand warmers for my batteries in my pack because they get cold and then they die. Um, you know, I brought my Nalgene, you know, Nalgene got icy, it didn't like completely freeze, but it got really icy and went, the water, you know, when I'm thirsty and I'm sweating and I'm hot and I'm cold, like you have to stay hydrated. And the last thing you want to do is like drink ice cold water when it's zero degrees outside and you can't feel your fingers and you can't feel your toes. And it's like little things like that. All those little things that you don't think about until you're actually in there. That's what this trip was about. It was not about just making an awesome video. It was about getting experience so that eventually I can make an awesome video. When I'm out in the outdoors, whether I'm scuba diving, or pack rafting, or I'm rock climbing. There's all these other elements besides like just this that I have to worry about. And it's not just filming, it's you have to learn the ropes of whatever adventure you're on. Over the years, I've realized that not only has my camera brought me to so many awesome places and introduced me to so many dope people, but it's also really helped me step out of my comfort zone. It's got me to do a lot of things that I typically wouldn't do. I typically wouldn't do things, whether it was something that I felt comfortable doing or something I just like wasn't interested in doing because I've never done it before. My camera has kind of given me permission to step outside my comfort zone, to try things that I normally wouldn't, whether I just wasn't interested in them or I just felt uncomfortable doing it. Like this right here, like this right here has just, given me permission to kind of like bring out my inner child. I've always said it, long distance sailing scares the crap out of me, but I would totally do it if there was an opportunity to tell a cool story. It's almost like my camera has given me permission to be fearless, to have like that childlike mentality of being fearless, of having curiosity, mentality of exploration and curiosity. Like exploration and curiosity that that comes first and fear comes second or third. Yeah, I just really want to say that I'm extremely grateful that I ever picked this thing up um, because there's so many things that I've done over the course of the last five years that I would never imagine myself doing. And this trip is one of many more examples to come.